Historians agree that this pub invented the modern buffalo wing, but not even its owners, the Bellissimos, were exactly sure of who did what. Teresa Bellissimo said her son Dominic was out with his buddies, and they all stopped by the bar late one night. Teresa wanted to whip up a snack for the boys. She was about to make a chicken stock using some wings, but instead chopped them in half, fried them up, and served them in a glorious sauce made of Frank's Red Hot and butter. But Dominic always said it was a Friday night, and many of the regulars at the bar were devout Catholics. No meat on Fridays. The wings were a holy reward as the clock struck midnight for staying pious. Then there's Frank Bellissimo's story. He claimed that one day the anchor bar received the wrong delivery chicken parts. They ended up getting a bunch of unusable wings. Oh, gross! Frank asked his wife, Teresa, to make something up. And before you knew it, her signature wings were a staple on the anchor bar menu. And there you have three different stories from the Bellissimo. Welcome back to Moneyball, ladies and gentlemen. I am excited to have with me uh, the Wing King. I have founder of National Chicken Wing Festival, Drew Serza. What is happening, my man? Boy, I'm nine days out right now, and um, I'm feeling pretty good about the festival coming up Labor Day weekend. It's a it's a big event, and I get to eat all the wings I want for free. <laughs> How many years is this? This will be your 23. It seems Ooh. like yesterday, but time flies when you're having fun, I guess. 23 years. Tell me about the genesis of the festival. How did it start? Where was it? How many people were there? So the neat thing is usually Hollywood knocks off real life stories, right? Well, this is real life knocking off Hollywood. There was a movie called Osmosis Jones. We're going on a trip this weekend. Mm -hmm. So, ta-da. Buffalo? Buffalo, New York. The Buffalo Wing Festival this weekend. Oh. Yeah, great. So what's the big surprise? We got tickets. I called a scalper. Look. 99 kinds of wings. 128 different dipping sauces. You love math. Crunch the numbers on that and tell me the possibilities aren't infinite. Look, look, here you are. Miss Chicken Wing Festival. In the future, Bill Murray, who was a big jungle year, but he wanted to go to the National Buffalo Wing Festival. Wings was his favorite food, and the whole movie was about this. So a writer, Don Esmond from the Buffalo News, put an article out there. Hey, why don't we have a Buffalo Wing Festival? They're called Buffalo Wings all over yeah, the country. Right, right. We, you know, why don't we celebrate it? And, and I was a I was a marketing guy, a promoter, an entrepreneur, and I'm like, you know what? I can figure this out. Let me just go for it. And oh, Donovan, I just went for it. No manual, awesome. had no clue what I was doing and just figured it out. That's that's amazing. That that really I'm glad it's that story and not something else, because honestly, it's it's so you know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah, yeah. and it's not like, oh, well, you know, my brother's sister had a business. It was like, boom, you just did this. And so. Who did you get in touch with? How does one start a festival like that? Let's talk. Talk to me like I'm in kindergarten. Yeah. How does someone start that? You got to make people believe. You got to make people believe. So I called Don Evans up three days later after the article. And first I rented the movie. And in the movie, Bill Burke's got this. I hadn't seen the movie? No, I hadn't seen the movie. Not committed to it. Okay. That's <laughs> I time on my hands. Yeah. So, so in the movie, he's got this brochure, like a trifold. And he's talking to his daughter, who's in eighth grade who wants to go on this camping trip at the school the same weekend. Yes. So he's got a seller on it. He's going, look at this, 100 different styles of sauces, a chicken wing contest, a Miss Buffalo wing contest, but, and a couple other things. So I'm like, okay, I ran the movie. I'm like, that's what I'll do. So I called Don Esmond. I said, yeah, we're going to have food vendors from all over. I'm going to fly them in from all over the country. I had no idea how I was going to pay for it. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm going to have a winning contest, a, a Miss Buffalo wing contest, and a hundred different sauces. And um, I'm going to get Pepsi Cola. I'm going to get Frank's Red. I'm going to get all these guys. Yeah, you wrote yeah. the article. Like, it's going to happen. Producer, this girl, Mary Ryan, I think her name is, from South Buffalo. Yeah. She was a CNN producer. She saw it. They did this 30-second clip on it, a story. Buffalo's going to have a wing fest. Yeah. That was really year. This is that first year. Well, this is three days after I committed to it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So now, how the hell am I going to do it? I got to get some money, right? Well, yeah. the first thing I did, it was one idea, but I'm like, I got to make people feel like they got to be in it. So I, I knew the people at Pepsi. I said, I'm going to have one soda. It's either going to be Pepsi or Coke. And they're like, no, we want to do it. It's got to be us. I front the Frank's Red Hot. I'm going to have one hot sauce. Yeah. Okay, let it be us. Let it be us. Everybody, uh -huh. I made them feel like they had to be the guy. That's great. You know, so I got to do it, man. Yep. Yeah. 
and make them believe. And then I got Pepsi, Frank Spread. I got all these big sponsors. Now it looks like, holy shit, this thing must be really big, you know? Yep. So I come from all around the country to attend that, uh, that event uh, because of the nature. We're doing, going through the planning process. Now we got to figure out how to pay for all this stuff. And I had like $100,000 in equity in my home. So my wife, first of all, she thought it was nuts. So I had to sign her name on the loan, the home equity. So she didn't know she was all in too. And I got the money. So now I'm like, oh my God, I just hope it doesn't rain. I hope this thing works. Oh. Then I had to figure out how to cook all the wings. So I ordered a hundred turkey fryers. You know, the ones that kind of go on fire and blow up houses. Wait a second, wait so a second, I got wait, wait a second, wait a second, pause, pause. Yeah. You don't have any restaurants involved at this point. No, yeah, or experience. I never cooked. You, you're you going to cook all the wings yourself? No, I, I figured I would get restaurants, but I had to get all this stuff going first. Okay, because all right. Because for the restaurants to leave, I got to have a cooking process. I didn't tell them it was turkey fryers. I had to have sponsors. I had, I, then I rented uh, the old pilot field. It was done. That's what I was, was going to ask, like, how did, yeah. okay. And, yeah. and how did one go about renting the field? So I just went and met with John Dandies from the Buffalo Bisons. And I okay. said, here's my idea, what I want to do. And John, you know, he's a visionary and he's like, yeah, this would be great. You can rent the stadium from us. So now I had the stadium. But so notice he still notice he still said you can rent the stadium from us. He didn't say like, this is a great idea. I'm going to lend you the stadium for a day. No, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. He didn't think it was that exactly. good of an idea, right? He knew there was something there. John's I'm, I'm joking. Smart. I'm joking. I'm, you know? I'm sorry. I know. I know. Yeah. And, and we became good friends from this. But yeah. so now I'm like I'm putting all these pieces slowly together, and then I got I did a lot of charity work. So I called my friends from the different charities, and they say I need volunteers. And I'll give you guys some of the proceeds Smart. at this point, train the right. Yeah. You know, so now I got all the volunteers. I got charities involved. Then I went to some people in the media. So I pieced it all together. Then I started calling restaurants. I'm like, oh my God. And I'll fly you in. I'll put on the credit card, get you rent a car. And I got about seven or eight to, okay. to fly in. And then I had about four or five locals. I called in some favors from some people. Okay. Mike Valletta from Valletta's restaurant. He was great. Okay. I said, you might have to bring a ton of food because I don't even know how these wings are going to cook. Right. I called Tyson. You know, made a deal with them and just pieced it all together. So now we're like a week out, you know, and everything's moving along. Let me uh, let me pa pause one second again. So yeah. from the time this happened, what was? The, do you remember the day you watched Osmosis Jones? August twenty eighth. August twenty eighth. And when was the plan to have the festival? My first planning meeting. You can't make this up. Was September eleventh, two thousand one, at nine a.m. Get out of here. Can't make it up. So I, I, had just, a, I just uh, got chills. I just got chills. I get chills. I think about it. I had a marketing company. I had about seven or eight people working for me. And I had a graphic artist. And he comes in. And, you know, we, the internet wasn't big back then. It was just right, getting right. going. And um, his mom called. He said, you know, just heard that the Twin Towers got hit by a plane. So now we turn on the TV. We spent the whole day just watching TV yeah. from the office. Of course. Thinking yeah. there's not going to be any more events. We Is our country going to blow up? Right, right. So right. then we wait yeah. until actually... I didn't pick things back up until January and start in the plan. So I lost all that planning time. Yeah. Yeah. It was crazy. So Yeah. What, well, obviously, and, and, and you can't forecast for what happened on that day. Right. But yeah. you did pick it back up. You didn't say, okay, this is lost time. You know what? Maybe I should just shelve this because you are a visionary and you are a pioneer. So where did it go from there? So January, you start thinking again. And did you say, I'm yep. going to do this on the 4th of July or something? Or when did you say you were going to do it? Well, it's funny. You say, it had to be Memorial Day weekend or Labor Day weekend. I had to figure it out. And back then, the climate has changed. Memorial Day weekend was always dicey, really dicey, between rain and coolness. So I decided, I'm going to do a Labor Day weekend. It's a holiday weekend. It's the end of the summer. And there were no events in Buffalo Labor Day weekend. The yeah. last event of the year was always Erie County Fair. So I figured I had two weeks in between to promote and be the, the show, you know, for two weeks. Yeah. And that was part of my process. And also, the last uh, the last uh, games for the Buffalo Bisons was Labor Day weekend. Okay. So what they did, they made sure they were in Rochester and always out of town for that weekend. So they okay. didn't change their schedule for me. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. So along the way, I called in favors with friends, and I'll never forget my one buddy, Terry Dunford, worked at Westfield oh. Nuclear Project, and he says, do you need banners? I go, yeah, I'm going to need lots of banners. He goes, well, I got a machine at work. Make us a sponsor, and I'll get you banners. So now I'm like trading out favors and stuff like that. Yes. And so about two months out, I get a call from the Food Network, and they had a show called America's Festivals. Okay. And they wanted to come out and film the Wing Fest. How did so they hear of course, um, Googling the internet and saw my buffalowing.com. But this is still the first year? 
first year. Yeah, before the first year. Wow. Okay. So I had the Food Network that wanted to come out. I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. Of course, I used that for leverage to get yeah. more sponsors and more people involved to make it feel good. Tell the media. And then I worked very closely with uh, Visit Buffalo Niagara, which was the Buffalo Niagara Convention Visitors Bureau back then. And they said, we'll get behind this for PR. It's great to have people travel in from Bu Buffalo. So there was a young guy, Doug Sittler, became a really good friend. He's like, well, let's call the Today Show. Let's get somebody big. And we're like, yeah, all right, Doug, okay. Yeah. A week later, hey, Drew, um, you're not going to believe this. I got you booked on the Today Show. I said, come on. He goes, no, the week they wanted you to come out that Monday. Folks, he's not lying because I've watched the show and I'm going to have a little clip of it when we when I edit this. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, what do I have to do? He goes, well, you're going to cook wings for Matt Lauer. I said, I don't cook. How are we going to do that? He goes, he goes, well, we're going to figure it out, right? I said, yeah, I'm going to figure it out. Well, back then, and even now, well, back then, they didn't have all these food stylists. So when you're on the plaza yeah. and you've got that, the big table with all the food and the yeah. prettiness and that, yeah. Yeah. it's on you. It's yeah. on you to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. So what do I do? I start Googling, and I find this guy, Armand Vanderstegel. He's our big-time chef. He did a book called Wings Across America. Okay. And he lives in New York. He's got a restaurant out there. I'm like, oh my God, he's got to be my guy. So I get his phone number. I call him at the restaurant. I explain what this, I'm doing. First of, all, first of all, this is unbelievable, this story. As you're going and you kind of talk about it like it happened yesterday, man. So like your your brain is oh. like the fact that all of this is going on. No, oh, man, I'm impressed. Oh. Drew and I have spoken a few times, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know. I mean, he's I consider him kind of a buddy of mine now, but I never heard this whole story. And to hear the fluidity and how this all transpired. And it's just like, bang, 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 bang. Like, how do you even back then get a hold of Von Schnitzel with, with, with no Instagram, with no Instagram or Facebook? Nothing. What did you, what did you write him? Email, nothing. I call, I, I almost like going to the yellow pages looking at a restaurant name or a restaurant phone number. And I called. He answered. And he answered. Yeah. So now, so now I say, hey, I, I'm going on the Today Show. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'm talking about the wing fest. This is a guy who's really into wings, right? So he goes, oh, I'll go on with you. Can you get me on? I go, yeah, I'll get you on. I said, can you bring everything? He goes, Drew, I'll lay that thing out like no tomorrow. It'll look beautiful. I'll bring the wings. I'll show you how to cook them before the thing. And we're using a pot of oil down the tabletop earth. So anyways, the um, my wife and I drive down to New York City. The Friday. So this is the weekend before that Friday before. And we get to New York City on Saturday. They put us up in this fancy hotel. They pick us up in a car at six o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we have to have everything set up by seven o'clock. So now I'm supposed to meet Armand there at six o'clock in the morning. And we're there waiting on the plaza. There's some other thing going on, like some dog thing and then something else. And Armand's not there. It's 6 15, 6 30, oh, 6 45. So the producer from the show says, hey, where's your guy? I said, oh, he'll be here. He's good. He goes, well, how well do you know him? He goes, well, I never really met him. And they go, and all of a sudden, around the corner, comes Armand, the chef Armand, dressed in all black in the chef's coat, this black long ponytail. Okay. He looked like the chef. Yeah. He comes with all this stuff, the coolers, and he's ready. Okay, where are we laying it all out? He lays it all out. And then me, him, and this other guy, we do the wings, and I'm cooking wings for Matt Lauer in the Today Show. And... I was so nervous, I couldn't get nervous. It, I mean, it was fluid on the Today Show. I mean, there with Matt Lauer, and now that used to be a good name, right? Yeah, right, right. But right, um, right, right, we pulled right. it off, and this is Tuesday, and all of a sudden, like Channel 2 here in Buffalo, they're saying, hey, Drew Serves will be on the Today Show to talk yeah, about yeah. the Winter. So it was a big story. Because yeah. People didn't get on the Today Show. And now all of a sudden... Everybody locally thinks this must be the real deal. The wing fest must be the real deal. Wow. So I'm going to just go four days later. It's like eight o'clock in the morning, the day of the festival. Yeah. We got all the tents set up. I'm waiting for the restaurants. Nine o'clock, waiting for the restaurants. About 10 o'clock, they start showing up. Yeah. I, I didn't realize restaurant guys, they work late and a lot of them would drink. Yeah. So oh, now yeah. they come yeah. in. Those chefs are partiers. So now they're setting up all their stuff. I got the turkey fryers in the back, cooking oil. So dangerous. The yeah. fire commissioner comes and he wants to shut me down. I knew I know Tony Massiello, the mayor, really well. I had to call Tony Massiello, explain what's going on. He'd have come down and get the fire commissioner away and just let it go, let it go. And it was now what time now? Morning. What time is it scheduled to start at noon? At noon. Okay. So here's the part I almost had a mental breakdown. Maybe I did. I you might have. Oh, go ahead. I'm on a golf cart with my wife, and I kid you not, Dunham, you can't make this up. 
So off this, the side street, Washington, is it where the yeah, baseball yeah. stadium Washington, is? Yep. There's, a, there's a ramp that comes down. These people are coming down the ramp and all the way around the block, you can see them in the parking lot, like around the side, like wrapped around the whole street. There was a line around the entire block of the baseball stadium at 1030 in the morning because they all want to get it. Wow. I'm like, oh, my God, Jody, wow. I said, we've got three restaurants here. I'm screwed. Reputation's done. We're going to have to move. This is done. I'm in tears. She's rubbing my back. It's okay. Yeah. Pull it together and just figure it out. Went for it. Just went for it. Yeah. And restaurants were great. The wings were so, awesome. So how, so how many showed up? We had 12 restaurants. Okay. So they did. They kind of came through, right? Like last yeah. minute kind of thing? Sure. Yeah. Serving 40,000 people. Well, yeah, but so, I mean, yeah, better than three. Yeah. They, they, yeah. So they're, so they're all, you know, there's lines like, 300 people deep at each restaurant, okay? It's like a big mass of people yeah, on the stadium, yeah, in the yeah. stadium. Nobody knows, knows what line they're in. God rest his soul, I remember um, Andy DiVincenzo from Billy Atkins. Okay. He came as a favor, and he did this famous stuff, Peppers. Well, it's like 6 o'clock at night. He's burned out because all the guys that were selling food, not wings, sold out because you yeah. couldn't get wings because it took so long. Yeah, he comes yeah. up to me. He goes, yeah. man, he goes, you are a lucky son of a bitch. I go, why? He goes, you're lucky you sold a lot of beer here because there were some bad people. And all of a sudden, they're in the, they, they, they didn't get mad anymore. They, they said they were here. And even though they waited in line, they were just happy to be part of it. Yeah. You know, happy part of it. So, we you know, I don't, I don't think, and again, sorry to cut you off here because this is such a great story, but I truly don't believe that if that was 2024, you'd have that same sentiment. I think because the way the no. world is now, people are so like, what have you done for me lately in the lack of patience, right? And a new generation. I think they'd riot. They'd riot. You know, they'd be like, what am I waiting? Why am I waiting two minutes for wings? You know, because they want instant gratification. They want to walk up and have their flavor sitting there waiting for them with a silver platter. You know, I mean, really, that's the truth. It's, they all act like they're checking on the Ritz Carlton, right? I mean, of, it's so true. It wouldn't have worked. Another thing you had going for you is the world had just suffered, you know, 9-11 had just happened. And the year following that, there was this brotherhood, right? There was a weird brotherhood. You could feel the energy. It was about one year it lasted where black wasn't black and white wasn't white. You know, it was like this weird energy for about a year. And I, God, man, I wish it still was like that, right? But, you know, everybody kind of came together because somebody knew someone who knew someone that was at the Trade Center that day. And, you know, it was like everybody, it was a brotherhood, man. People truly cared about each other. And that may have had something to do with it, too. But the fact that you pulled this off is insane. You're right. It was us against them back then. Now it's us against us. You know, it was way different. Totally. Agree. So we so we survived the first year. And now I got to figure out a new plan. I can't do turkey fryers anymore because the fire commissioner won't let me do them. So a buddy of mine, he had a Jimmy Cavaretta had a place called the Lobster Hut. He's a trailer, and he would go to the Indy 500 and all these different places. Yep. Well, the Indy 500 had big donut fryers. Yep. So they were selling them. So I bought 14 of those. Okay. Now I bring those in. Yep. And donut fryers don't cook like wings. So the second year, we got a little bit better and kept going with those for about nine years. Then I bought real deep fryers, invested in those. I have 36 deep fryers. Okay. Double basket deep fryer, so seventy-two baskets. So kind of something that you'd see, something you'd see at a restaurant, like the double fry. Same thing. Okay. Re I got restaurant fryers, yeah. So okay. I mean, there were a lot of things through the years um, that happened, but the thing that, that took us over the top was in two thousand seven. The tale, as only a proud Buffalonian could, I beat the Iron Chef himself, Bobby Flay, in a chicken wing cook-off. Now he calls me the Wing King. But Bobby Flay had a show called Throwdown, and he would go into a city and. They had a regional food and pick what he thought was the best and come in and compete one-on-one -on -one with his style of food against theirs. And you didn't know he was coming. It was kind of like a scam. So I got a call from the Food Network to say, that, yeah, I've got, we've got this show calling Hometown Favorite Foods, and we're doing a pilot program. We want you to be the host of the pilot show. I'm like, this is freaking great. Can you send us some video of yourself cooking? So Scott Levin was a buddy of mine. Yep. So I said, Scott, can you help me out, You know, train me how to do so? We do a three-minute cooking video, and we cut it down pretty good. And I send it off, and I'm pretty proud of it. So I, I wait. You know, Hollywood, right? You don't want to call right away. Yeah, yeah. So I call them <laughs> weeks later. It's like, uh, it's like when you meet a girl. Wait, what's like when you meet a girl for the first time? Exactly. You got to play yeah. it cool. Yeah. So I call the number. The number you are calling has been disconnected. No. 
did I get scammed? Two months later, I get a call. Hey, it's Julie from the Food Network. Um, hey, we, we we're going to go through with that that show. We, I don't know. There's okay. So they come in town for two days to film. So the first day we went to the you know different places around town. I went to a cooking school. Now we know how to cook wings, Donovan. So I know I'm a pro, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I train how to cook wings. I take them around town. The Sabres had a playoff game. Yeah. There was a party in the plaza that night, so I went on stage. At this point, I got a cape. This is Wing King, and yeah. the chicken wing hat. I'm uh, playing it right. So no, I didn't have the, the Wing King name. I just had like the hat and the cape. So Bobby Flay's second day, we're at the Anchor Bar. I'm cooking. They say, we just need a couple hours of B-roll of you cooking and a few yeah. people yeah. say something. So all of a sudden, the place starts filling up. They put a word out, hey, uh, free beer and wings at the Anchor Bar today. You know, yeah, from 11 to 1. That'll work. A fire department came after a call. And all of a sudden, this guy is up there and I'm giving him wings. He goes, hey, are you the wing? Are you Drew? No, I keep saying wing. Are you Drew Serza? He go, I go, yeah. He goes, my name's Bobby Flay. I'm here to compete with you against a chicken wing throwdown. Everybody goes nuts. Nobody knew. <laughs> and we filmed the show, me against him. That is so And it was cool. unbelievable. Yeah. And, I wanted to beat him. and that's when he called me the wing king. And that's where oh, the whole name. Yeah. I beat him and he called me the wing king. Okay. So now from there. He gave me the title. He gave me the title. I didn't know that. Yeah. Bobby Flay gave me the title. Yep. So you know that, right? I know that, man. That's awesome. So then the Daily News, the newspapers all do I'm beating Bobby Flay. So I calls from, again, the Today Show. I was on The View, Reed and Kelly, all these different shows. Because oh, what the hell? I beat Bobby Flay. So that took the festival up to the next level. So certain things elevate the festival. But the winking persona and the goofy guy with the shirt and the crown and the cape, now you got a talking head representing not just the yeah. chicken wing industry, but the festival. So that became a big advantage for me. How many people were at this first festival in your in your guess? I don't know if you did an exact count, but approximate. The Cops Ballpark to about 40,000 people. More than we could handle. Drew, that is absolutely like, I think, <laughs> obviously far exceeded your expectations. And oh. Now we've moved it, right? Let's fast forward 23 years to 2024. You and I could sit and probably talk for three to four hours about years uh, <laughs> one through 22, right? But but now we're on 23. And, you know, you've, you've moved to the venue, right? We're at the stadium this year. Yep. And, you know, as far as the hype and the excitement, people have now grown. This is part of Buffalo now. So when you said you said something earlier that resonated with me, you said the Erie County Fair, which me and my family and most people I know look at that as the sign of the end of summer. And I think what you've been able to do is actually change that to the Chicken Wing Festival now being the end of summer. And that's, you know, to, to change that culture of 100 years, right, of you, you took yeah. Great shows and and you you know and I've heard a couple people say that because you know even in my neighborhood when I when I said who I was having on or what I was doing they said oh yeah and that kind of changed their perception I like the time that you do it I think it would it, it definitely beats Memorial Day Memorial Day is people want to ho- cook hot dogs and hamburgers and get the summer well stuff said. and then Labor Day you know people want to and they want to icing on the cake for summer and September I think you said it earlier is the most beautiful month in Buffalo like. It's the yeah. nice weather. It, it's you get a little. It's San Diego weather. All September we get San Diego weather, and it's it's phenomenal. So what's going on this year? What are you most excited about? Let's tell the people kind of what they're in line for if they come this year. Yeah, can I back you up four years or yeah, five years just real quick? Yeah, sure, sure. And this is the transition time. The pandemic hit, and that was a big changeover. The Blue Jays couldn't you know, play in Canada because no U.S. teams could yes, go up there. Yes, yep. So they rented out, they took over the stadium, the Bison Stadium, Salem Field. Indeed. It was great baseball. That was a fun year. It was awesome. And, you know, the problem was they had Labor Day weekend booked. Oh, no. And they okay. also changed the layout of the stadium with bullpens and all that stuff. So I had no home. Okay. And I called Ron Recubia from the Bills. And the Bills said, yeah, you can come out to our place. So okay. now I still have to change the model of the festival. Because I don't think at that point, you don't think people want to be on top of each other. Yeah. It was too crowded. Yeah. So I made it more of a premium event. It's more yeah. premium now. So it went from $5 to 20 yeah. But the $20 yeah. of the state includes free parking. Yeah. And I moved from the city to the south towns. Yeah. Yeah. So my model was to get less people, believe it or not. Yeah. No, that um, makes sense. Um, that makes sense. There was too many people. And you just you want to make it more enjoyable. You know, you, listen. I know exactly where you're, what you're saying with this, and it, and it's it's not a stereotype, nothing like that. It's like, listen, I, I have friends that own bars, 
and they say, you know, you could have dollar drink night and you know exactly the crowd you're going to get, right? Or you yeah. could maintain $10 a drink every day, all day, and you know what crowd you're going to get. So that's just, that's just the way it is, period. That's a demographic. That's just, and you're right. You don't want, people don't want to be on top of each other and trampled and, but go ahead. And our demo changed from people that just wanted to hang out because they didn't I mean. yeah. Right. Like people that really want to be there. Thank you know? you. Yep. So we went from 50,000 people down to 20. That's okay. And guess what? We went through 85% of the volume of wings. What's yep. that tell you? Now people can actually eat and get the wings. If people want to yeah. stay and watch shows and awards, which I think is a big part of this, tell me a little bit yeah. about those, Drew. So we got the professional leaders that come in, the same ones that eat at Coney Island, Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, except okay. Joey. Because that's a whole separate situation. Joey right, Chestnut's an incredible or uh, impossible meat. Yeah, we know the story. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But we have Mickey Sudo, Bear Padlands, Booker, all the all the great eaters. Awesome. awesome. They, they eat on Sunday at five o'clock in the U.S. Chicken Winning Championship. Are you doing like a most exotic sauce this year or anything? Because it sounds like with sixty new flavors coming in, we're, we might we might have some weird ones. It sounds to me like we're going to have a mushroom pickle sauce. There's a hot dill pickles, by the way. There's there one you that's, Actually, that sounds really good too. Is there some type of exotic award or something, or or like you creative? Know? We call it we we call it creative, most creative. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what was? Do you remember what last year's was? I can't. I can't. But the uh, the place from Iceland. We have a restaurant from Iceland that comes that's, in. That's they won best in show. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's great. How I can't wait. I'm excited for this. You know, well, I've been to a couple. I, I'm really looking forward to this. The, the family is. Moneyball's going to be there Sunday. I'm working on getting a a, a, couple, a guest, a surprise guest. I won't mention who it is. Moneyball's going to be there Sunday. We are hyped about this event. Um, you know, there's going to be judges, obviously, checking out what wins what. And, and you know, you're going to see this guy all over the place. You're going to see Drew. You made this happen. I mean, one more thing I got to bring up, Donovan. I was Please with do. Russ Salvatore a couple of weeks ago, and we decided Saturday night is going to be Armed Forces Night. Okay. All veterans and active military get admitted free to the festival from oh. six to nine on Saturday night. So yeah, this is this is just truly amazing. The whole story, and I'm so happy that I got to hear this and that you shared it with all of the viewers. So guys, Labor Day weekend, it is the Mecca, as Drew stated. If you like chicken wings, or even if you don't, this is a Buffalo staple. If you want to go out and just see a, a mass, you know, a great event, everybody's smiling, you know, it, the weather's going to be great, at least fingers crossed. But even if it's not, hey, it doesn't, that doesn't slow down Buffalonians. And, and like you said, if somebody can make it from Iceland, then you can get off your couch and you can get to the, to the festival. So get your butts out there, get your tickets. Drew, where can people get tickets ahead of time? Can they? Yeah, you can go online at buffalowing.com and buy tickets. We also have a VIP ticket for $75, which includes five hours of craft beer tastings in the Toyota Club. Wings, a donation. We're raising money for Hope Prizes, which supports awesome. pediatric cancer families. That is phenomenal. Um, Friends of the Night people as well. We've raised over $470,000 over the last 23 years um, for local charities. This That's year is not, now, now you hit New now you hit home with me, man. Like I was going to say, it was is I don't often bring that stuff up unless the guest brings it up because you know not everybody is a is a philanthropist, right? Not everybody does that. But the fact that you just threw that in there is definitely icing on the cake for me. I love when people who are successful say, you know what? There's people who need this, you know, and 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 we can take a little and skin the cat a little bit, right? And we can give a little bit of what we of what we made. So that's phenomenal, and I'm really glad that you just mentioned that. So. I love it, man. Thank you so much for taking some time with Moneyball. When you walk into Bella Pizza, right from the jump, you can toucan Sam it, and your nose can lead you to the delicious smell of buffalo pizza and wings. This place is no joke. Enormous subs, all kinds of pizzas that you could possibly imagine, from taco pizza to chicken finger pizza, which is pretty famous here in Buffalo. Very friendly staff, and when you come on in, you can see how it's set up here. We have some big screens if you want to dine in. Pizza and wings and anything else you could ask for. Bella Pizza.